Hello everybody. I just wanted to come back and do a little painting for you today. I'm having surgery on my right thumb on Monday and so I won't be able to paint for a while so I thought I would come on and just do a little bit of demo with oil and cold wax. Okay, so today I'm interested in this photo. It has um, some really nice slabs of shale. It's from a hike in the mountains. And I really like the structure of this dark tree and then these light fall trees. The composition isn't great. Um, if I crop it here, you can see that these two things are quite balanced and I don't like that, but I do like this movement that's happening here. Um, so I just want to talk to you a little bit about the picture and what I need to change in it, okay? So hopefully you can see that and it's not glaring. So these things, notice these are all sort of pointing down the hill. So I'm, there's a little bit of a tree here that I'm going to use as a visual stopper to prevent you from moving out of the painting. And I'm there's a whole bunch of nothing much going on over here. So I'm going to play up. Uh, make some things happen here, but I like these light yellows against the darks um, Dark warm and dark cool happening back here. So I think there's some fun stuff to play with so I'm didn't do a value sketch this time Once you understand all these things you can do a lot of this stuff in your brain. So anyway, so here we go So I'm going to, I know you're not going to be able to see all of my mixing palette and that's okay. I'll try to mix closer over here so that you can be able to see what I'm doing. Um, I did grab this print of somebody's, I don't even know whose it is, sorry, um, pastel painting that I just really like the colors of. So I'm gonna sort of steal some of the colors, color ideas from here. It's a very different scene than what's happening here, but I think I can use these reds in the rocks here and um, I like this neutral gray kind of area and there's lots of that happening. And then just some of the fun things that's happening in this picture with, with the blues and how the blues sort of travel all over. So that's sort of a color idea that I'm thinking about and I think you can see it if I put that there. So anyway, I'm not gonna do any drawing. I'm just gonna start painting um, and I need to have some sort of dark underneath here. So I have a little bit of dark stuff mixed up, but not very much. So I'll just start uh, mixing with what I've got here. So there's gonna be some, and this has is on that red gesso that I told you about in my other video. So there's just some dark stuff, very thin, happening back here. And it's gonna sort of go up over there. There's a number of different ways you can make darks. You can use um, some charcoal powder. So this is General Charcoal, General's Charcoal Powder. And if I get a clean spatula here, um, what you can do with this is you can just put it out on your palette and then take some cold wax and mix the cold wax in with the charcoal and that gives you quite a different kind of dark than what I have used in the previous um, demonstrations with using uh, chromatic black oil paint. So this takes a bit to get all mixed up, but it's quite a matte, um, ends up being quite matte because of the charcoal powder in it. And uh, I kind of like that. So anyway, there's some nice, it's not all mixed in yet, but that's good enough for now. Um, and, and you can apply that, you know, with a spatula or with a palette knife or whatever you want. So this is just a bit of dark, some of my dark pattern. Um, I want this dark green, so I have some ultramarine blue here. Um, and I'm gonna, in this, I'm gonna not be so neutral. I'm gonna do more my normal color, um, color kind of palette so there's a dark blue and that can go in as some of the base up for this uh, big evergreen tree up here um, and I have a bunch of other colors sort of here here's some purple I like purple with blue this is all just dark value happening here for these dark trees that's gonna happen here uh, and they're gonna go off the page up here 
and then I'm gonna have this other dark tree happening here and I have some neutral stuff in here too um, some gray so I'm just getting some stuff on the canvas that I can work with I have some yellow here some cadmium yellow if I mix that cadmium yellow with that charcoal I'm gonna get a uh, interesting yellow green which is no not happening anywhere in here but i could put some of that on here and uh, add a bit more black to it and see whether or not i can get to a nicer color maybe some more blue that's still pretty green let's just put some of that in there and we can use it or not use it it doesn't really matter this is just again as i said just have some things to work with um, some random stuff that maybe I can use some of these initial marks uh, is just getting the you need to have enough paint on the palette to begin to work with so uh, and I'm just sort of I'm just willy-nilly here I don't really have a I don't have um, a huge plan in mind like I had for the other painting um, I have some red here um, it's sort of a pinky kind of a magenta kind of color if I put some of that black in there then I'll get a more neutral kind of a red and I kind of like that idea some when I put stuff on top of this it might mix with this and make some new colors which which will be fun this is looking quite messy at the moment but that's okay this value is too light um, so I think I'm gonna just mix it down a bit with some of that red to darken that value and what else do I want to put in there how about some orange these are all sort of colors I had left over mixed up from previous projects and um, and I just thought I'd play with that the the charcoal mixes differently with the paint than the than um, the black oil paint so it's kind of neat to sort of see what's what kind of effects you might get just by mixing those things together. And there's gonna be some of this over here, I think. And I'm gonna kind of make this up as I go. So this is like totally opposite to what I did before. Um, and the reason that I'm doing it this way is because um, I wanna just, this is more the way I normally work and um, Coal, I want to show you one of the nice things about coal wax is its freedom to be able to, um, you know, let things dry and then come back to another layer later on. Um, this is some uh, chromatic black. It's kind of stiff. I'm going to add a little bit more coal wax to it. So I said that before that um, if you have some coal, some paint that um, kind of got stiff, just add a little bit more cold wax to it. Um, and that will help it to um, to soften up again. So there's a blue. I don't even have any white hanging out on my palette at the moment. I need to just lighten that a little bit. So I'm going to take some titanium white. And I'm trying to watch the time so that I make sure that I'm not keeping you too long. All right, so I just want to see the color of that dark. That's kind of a nice steely blue in there. Some of that might be quite nice. It's going to sort of pull in from where the sky's going to be blue kind of thing happening up there. And maybe some more happening over here. I need a dark green um, to happen for these trees. I have some fun colors though. I have this turquoise. And I'm going to mix that into this pile of very bright stuff. And um, so that's green. If I want to tone down that green, I'll add some red to it. And that will just tone that, take some of the edge off that green. I think it needs to be cooler, so I'm going to add some blue. You can see I'm darkening and dulling it as I go. Uh, let's add a little bit more of the cool red and a bit more of the blue because I want a darker value. There we go. 
And that's kind of a brown color with all of those colors mixed together. I don't really want it to be brown. I kind of want it to be bluer, so um, cooler than that. So now I'm getting to a more neutral pile of paint that's quite a neutral, mm, muddy color. And we'll just put some of that in there. Sometimes these neutral colors can just is, are just the perfect thing to set off the other color in the in the painting. So that's kind of fun to have that in there. And we'll put some of that green over on this tree. This is going to be a minor note. This tree over here. I don't I'm not going to make it as big as it is in the picture. I don't think. Anyway, so let's put that there and. So let's see, what do I have now? So I want to get some of that sky color in just so I can see what it looks like. I, I think I'm there's some cloud in my picture. I might drift some clouds in because if everything is vertical, I need some horizontal things to sort of counter it. So maybe some sky kind of cloud kind of thing might be kind of fun to do there. I have some warm white here. This warm white is a little stiff because it's been sitting around for a while and I didn't add it, to add cold wax to it. So I will go and grab some cold wax and, and just, um, oh, now I've got a dirty color. That's not nice. However, there's a lot of uses for dirty colors. Dirty colors make beautiful colors when you put them on top. The colors that you put on top just sing. So there's a muddy kind of color, but it could live in the bottom of some cloud form or something maybe happening here. And um, so maybe I will make some, mix some white with some cold wax here, try not to get the, where I put in there with a dirty palette knife. Try to keep away from all the other colors that I don't want to pollute this. Now remember what I told you last time about warm whites and cool whites. So this is a cool white. If I put a cool white on top of this warm, you know, that's kind of kind of, it'll really advance the, it'll advance the color. And having that warm white in the bottom might be a good idea. I don't, I really don't know what this shape is going to be yet. I just sort of wanted to see some value change happening in there. So um, in my painting down here, I do have some light neutral values. And then I have, of course, this brilliant yellow uh, that's happening there. Probably um, if you don't want to have, sorry. If you don't want to have a lot of texture in your piece, I don't know what, oh, here it is, fell on the floor. If you don't want to have a lot of texture in your piece, you can come with your, sque your squeegee and um, move this over a bit so I have some room here. So you can see I can sort of take down some of that and move it around and, and uh, it'll give me a bit more opportunity for flat stuff. I don't want a lot of texture in the beginning here. Um, I want that to happen later on. I don't want there to be a lot of texture in the sky, for example, which I think is kind of a smooth place. Um, so I'm gonna kind of make some smooth uh, stuff going on. And um, remember I told you before, the whole two strokes, it, one, one stroke is enough and then clean your Thing because otherwise you get um, this color mixing with this other color and it's it's uh, makes a lot of muddy kind of stuff it also makes some nice soft edges though so some of that I might want to keep and cover up that anyway so now I can at least see what some light might look like here um, and then I've got the real dark stuff um, Maybe get some more blue coming down here for some shadow kind of thing happening there. Just I want some dark underneath to put this light uh, yellow fall tree on. So um, yellow, um, the complement of yellow 
is purple. So if I throw in some of this where this tree is going to be just to kind of, this is all really super wet paint right now. So if I have anything but a very gentle touch, it's going to mix together and make mud, which I do not want. Um, so I'm going to try to keep my colors pretty clean. Uh, it's, it's very difficult to lay color on without um, digging in when everything is so wet, which is why I was trying to keep some, uh, some of this really thin stuff. And again, I'm just letting see what happens. Some of this can mix. And I can, once this tacks up, I, I'll be able to come back in it. Um, I also don't want a lot of texture at this stage, so I'm just going to knock down a bunch of this stuff. And I'm not cleaning my spatula off between, so it means that everything's going to kind of mix, which is okay because it's an underlayer. More than anything, I'm just concerned about the value of this underlayer more than I am concerned with the color of the underlayer, okay? So there, and maybe I'll take some of this off. Maybe I can get something interesting happening here with an edge. And this tree is way too thick. So I'll take some, you can see how much paint I've taken off of that. And I'm not concerned with the shape of this. I just know that I want this to be lighter in value than that because it's further away. So I can take some of this blue-gray kind of color that I've got over on my palette and mix that in. And the cooler and lighter this is, the more it's going to um, recede into the distance. So that's kind of fun. This edge is going to be really important, what shape that edge is, but I'm not going to deal with that right now. And when I have muddy color, I just put it off in, in the corner and I'll come back and make a pile of mud later on. And I'll use that for some neutrals. So nothing goes to waste, which is kind of a, kind of a neat thing. Where else do I have a bunch of texture here? I have a bunch of texture happening here, but that's going to be where the leaves and stuff are of my main uh, tree. So I think it can probably stay there. Um, I have some uh, cad yellow. Unfortunately, if I don't want you guys to turn around, be upside down or sideways, which what happens because um, unfortunately, um, Instagram doesn't allow you to rotate your your board, uh, your camera. It just doesn't want to do that. So um, I have to do this long and skinny so that you can see what I'm doing. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. That's a really bright yellow. And I don't, I'm, this is the last thing I'm going to put on, but I need to see, I need to see a little bit of it so I know what's going to be my bright. Okay. So and this, as I said, is going to mix with all these other colors right now. And I have a very hard tool that I'm applying this with. So that is also something to take into consideration. Um, so I think I, I don't like this shape for sure, but I love how the leaves are coming up, hanging off here. So I'm going to neutralize again some of this yellow and the opposite of yellow is purple. So I'm gonna take some of my violet that I've got here and I'm just gonna put that into my yellow. So you can see how it's still a beautiful color as opposed to adding black to darken it. It has quite a bit of chroma, it's quite lovely. Uh, so I put some of that in there. I don't even know where these are gonna go yet, but I'm just put, as I said, I'm just getting something on the, something to react to. That was something that I learned from Brian Adio, um, is put something down so you have something to react to, which, which is a really great, um, a really great idea. So here's some lighter stuff that I want to use for maybe some of these shale things that are, that's a really interesting thing. I probably couldn't have gotten that any other way. 
um, then by smishing this on top of some wet paint that happened to be there. So anyway, I'm gonna continue like this and I'm going to um, block this all in and then I'm gonna let it set up and I'll come back to it tomorrow. Anyway, take care, God bless, stay safe and we'll see you tomorrow.